So we've yet to have the baby, which means it's time to get into this terrible kitchen. Let me explain. One of the top priorities for us is storage. And as you can see, we're using this beautiful Ikea shelf that Sarah's had since college. This has got to go. I absolutely hate the color red. That wall is red and these cabinets are damn near red. They also don't have door pulls, so they got to go. It's got to go. It's got to go. So whatever schmuck built this house put a bathroom off of the kitchen. This is where we store all of our pans. We have this super weird bulkhead that we don't think has any duct work in it. I've got this nice tiny little cabinet over here under where we put our stand mixer. But for the most part, what we're trying to do is make this place a little bit more efficient. We have food stored literally everywhere. So we're gonna make a custom pantry. We're going to do custom cabinetry over on this wall. We'll do a nice full length base cabinet over here with a trash can holder and some upper storage to get this clutter fixed. And then we're gonna pour a concrete countertop in place, which should be pretty cool. All in all, we've got a lot of work and my wife is 37 and a half weeks pregnant, which means we need to get humping. Let's go. So to save time and a little bit of coin, we are going to cut all of our carcass parts on the CNC. Jordan has been doing a phenomenal job of learning how to use the software called Mosaic that literally just spews out all of the parts into nice fancy cut lists. So that way Sam and I can start slapping stuff together. Whole point here is to go as fast as we possibly can because that baby, she's coming in hot. Let's fire up Miss Piggy. Ready? Yeah, you don't need me for shit. Okay. While Jordan's running the CNC, getting all the parts made, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting them together. We'll just assembly and line our way through it. It's gonna get confusing quick for a lot of cabinets. Uh, so all the cabinets are more or less the same. Tips here on how to put cabinets together. If you've cut all the pieces, glue and pin nail everything together first, and then come back and put screws in. Tough titties, Jordan, keep working. You were supposed to have these done. Let us spray. Jordan is continuing to dominate using Mosaic. He's got a killer cut list here. We're gonna get all the parts for the face frames, the doors, and the drawer fronts. We got these all pre-ripped to make it faster on us. Let's rip. Yeah, they're already ripped. Let's chop. And now it is time to take cabinets that we sprayed and the face frames that we glued and combine them. Make a baby. No. Cook it up love. I'm gonna go get a biscuit joiner. Today, we're making door and drawer fronts. We can potentially order just enough plywood. We're dumb. We're not dumb. John's dumb. Typically, I would not cut these until after the drawers are glued up or ready to be glued so we can prove they all fit. But if we have to order more plywood, I want to know that before I get to that step. So I hope this computer sheet's ready. Oh, let's get it. You guys ever feel like you just spent two days doing something wrong? I feel like this happens a lot. You just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. We caught it before we did it. We did every one. It sucks, but <sighs> that explains a lot though. So why my doors are always wrong for the first day. <laughs> so this isn't the first <laughs> rodeo this week at all? I thought I was bad at making doors. <laughs> I thought quarter inch was industry standards. I never thought to check. I mean, that's what I've always done, but I've also never used a computer program to do all math. We learned something today. Yeah, I learned that it worked with a bunch of Idiots. You're the idiot. So, Jordan has done this a couple times and didn't figure out his mistake. We just cut, how many doors are on this thing? Like 30, and currently they're all wrong. Oh, luckily we caught it. We didn't finish all of them, so. They're oversized, which I wanted to swear I love. So, I texted the boss, because he's been on his phone all day playing TikTok or something. Uh, we dove into Mosaic and realized that it's probably for a half inch maybe. I go to put this together, and I'm like, hey, Jordan, why is this one wrong? Wait, <laughs> a half inch deep groove? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know what Mosaic did, we cut all the parts, and I'm like, hey, Jordan, why the f is this uh, a half inch wrong? And it's a half inch long. 
the door. So I get to now cut every style and every panel down. Every rail. And Ten I just have to cut half inch. Just fix it. So the cabinets are ready for finish. And instead of being a bunch of schmucks like we know we are, we're gonna head over to my buddies, the Banuras, who've got a professional cabinet shop and learn how to actually do this the right way. And it should be a little bit quicker and better finish. So float them up. All right, so we just got the Banura. This is Billy, the son of the legend, Bill. I think the guy's been around for 55 years now. I've known Billy since the end of high school. We won't tell you that story and how we met, but they've been professionally doing cabinet work for a long time. They're gonna show us how to do this the right way so that it doesn't suck. Let's get to it. Billy's got us ready to rock with the finish coat. He's gonna let me do a few. Hopefully I don't screw this up. What a spring! Oh, well, you know, I got a little kink in the shoulder and I was bringing her down and it just didn't want to move anymore. I had to jolt her through. You can't tell on the film. Oh, I can see the run coming out the side. I'll say Jordan did that. When you sign your work, John, sign it good. Whoa. Uh, I mean, it is what it is. Mother. Well, we ordered the drawer boxes because they're better done and they're faster typically, and they just pushed them back two weeks. I can't literally just not have the kitchen done for two weeks. This sucks. Unfortunately, my wife's literally at the doctor right now. I don't think we're gonna be able to get this done before the baby arrives. Much, much, much later. Come on kids, it's time to get back to the kitchen build. So, for those of you that don't know, Annie has arrived. Yay! Hence why we had to put this project on pause yeah. for a few more weeks. But, you know, she's about a month old now, which means it's time to get back to work. We do live in this house, and because of that, we're gonna have to work around some stuff. So, we are gonna pull the microwave and the oven out. We're gonna leave the fridge as long as we can. We need a sink and the dishwasher because of the baby stuff, and you know, God forbid I stop eating. To do that, we're gonna start with taking out the uppers and then seeing what's under this bulkhead. The biggest hiccups that could happen are gonna be dependent on what's behind here. So we've emptied all the cabinets, now it's time to start pulling these things off the wall. I'm doing great. Oh, surprise, motherfuckers! <laughs> it's church-like, because that shit's holy. No? Your jerks are bad and you should feel bad. Wow. He is a dad now, so you can't make that joke. I can. That's fair. Yeah. It's scary up there. A lot of real Jankosaurus stuff in there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I had one screw. Hey, the outlet was holding the cabinet. I've got to love America. All right, you should be able to come off that room. Let's go straight into the trash with the Jordan. Got it? Good stuff in there. You sure you don't want to go through it? Trash is right there. We can take the ceiling up. Essentially, what we're gonna do is come in here and we'll just take this drywall off and knock down these two by fours. We should be good to go. This hurt Sam's ear. This could potentially be headaches because we have no idea what's in it. We have no idea why they built it. It literally made the room like a foot and a half shorter. So, let's poke some holes. Let's see what's going on. It looks good. Nothing's biting it. Nothing's eating it. Okay. Why is it drywall on both sides? What the? Why is this isn't good? This should not be like this. You want to switch jobs for the day? There you go. There's a cable there. So. I gotta get gloves. If you guys didn't witness me basically cut my hand off in last week's video, I can't go gloveless anymore. It's the end of an era. I'm Jordan Hyder and this is bulkhead removal. Alright, cut some stuff. Hey man, son, Jordan wasn't built for remodeling. Now we've confirmed that the electricity is gone. Let's cut some shit out of the wall. So, safety first. This 
has become completely jankified. We need support here, and these are actually just floating on top plates. They're not proper. So we're gonna tempt this corner back up for the night, come up with a game plan in the morning, and then get back at it. I don't want my fat ass walking up the stairs and having this thing falling on my head. Me falling through the floor, that would suck. Damn. Fortunately, we're gonna have to put this bulkhead back in up here. We'll still be able to take out this one here, and we're gonna be able to raise that bulkhead. Still, it's still worth doing. Jordan, have you ever done any of this kind of stuff? Cool. If you don't know what you're doing, find somebody that does. All right. Let's get into this. Here, Ben, you can have that. Thank you. And that is how to f up John's house. Got some trade professionals coming in because I don't want to do any of the electrical in here. So we're gonna get all the wiring done. We're gonna slap up some drywall, do some flooring, and then hopefully get back to having some semblance of the kitchen pretty soon because I'm starving. And if I have to order another damn pizza, I'm going to explode from type two. We don't need the door there no more. 20 feet, a little bit of crosswind. Oh! I thought it might like kite yeah. catching and going. Closer than I thought. I usually hit a fade. So it's time to actually start drywalling. There's not a ton of it, but it's a little bit awkward. So we're gonna throw all three of us at this one. Hopefully button this room up so my dog doesn't stop eating plaster on the floor. Put the drywall! Yes. Everything's great. I got it, Dad. Look, it's my daughter and my wife and my dog. Hi, right? your shirt. We've got a few little things behind you here, but because the room's fabric cobbled together, we've got 15 year old construction, 100 year old construction, Sam and Mai's new stuff in here too. The unfortunate part is we're gonna have to go with some textured walls. There's a lot of things in here we just can't control and getting them smooth would just take us forever. And we're covering most of the walls of cabinets anyway. So we're gonna continue getting through this mud and then hopefully just get all of that tied up, then moving on to the flooring. So here's some tips that I learned from Sam, the guy behind the camera, who's actually good at flooring. One, get your flooring in front of you. Two, work from one side to the other. We're gonna work out, get over to here, and do all of our cuts five, six, seven at a time. That way, we're not cut one single back, cut one single back, it slows you down. So you go faster if you run out from one edge. Lastly, use your cuts on this side to start the other side. Use that cutoff piece, don't throw it away. We're gonna have some dead spots over there that we know about, so we're gonna reuse them over there. There's three tips. I'm John and Sam. Never me. You don't know anything. All right, let's keep rocking and rolling. So we're I'll take responsibility for not QCing the drawings to enough detail, but our whole timeline's This whole wall's All the drawers, we're literally out five grand on this cabinet. Okay, so once again, I did not double check Jordan's drawings. Jordan's never done this before, not Jordan's fault. To the same extent, we're just gonna shorten the doorway slightly. A 34 inch wide doorway is a little bit goofy. We're gonna bring this down to 31. A 30 inch door is incredibly standard in older homes. We can live with a 31 inch wide opening. So that's gonna be our solution. That'll give us the meat. Could be better, could be worse. She'll send. Six, six. I'm gonna try not to ram one of those in my crotch. So did you just rip that off? No, you did, you jag. Yeah, that is why I have a puncture wound in my leg. Oh, that's what you kneeled on? All of the bits in between are missing. <laughs> I have incredibly irresponsible people working at this company. Hey, I'm gonna screw her in, all right? Screw her in, barely know her. That's cool. It, it beeps at you instead of, <laughs> it breaks your wrist. Am I fired? Uh, no, that's just Jordan's cabinet falling apart. Damn it, Jordan. It's upper time. 
not supper time. We've got to screw this upper into this wall here. A little bit of pre-drilling. Okay. We got the laser level out, so it's gonna tell us where our bottom is. We would not recommend anyone doing it like this. You should probably put a board to the wall, or if we don't have any, or uh, build some stilts to stand off on your lowers. So uh, we're gonna put up the middle one first, and then we're gonna level her out, ram her in the other holes. We're we just gonna send it? I think we are. Take a movie real quick, dear. All right, Jordan, you ready? No, I am. I hate you. You're fired. I never go, come back go, to work go, ever go again. Go back to the engineer. Oh, that looks great, guys. What's up, dude? Jordan's up, and they gotta go up. Down. Jordan, up. The pube. Pube. How many pubes you got, son? No, pube. Damn, we should be able to put another one. God damn it, Jordan. Who built these? How the f are we supposed to screw this cabinet in? Okay, you can go here. Okay, where are the black screws at? <laughs> hold on, hold on, Sam. Cut it up, cut it up, cut it up. How do you want it? Like, I don't know, just some way that I can put a damn screw in the fucking thing. Gordon, why is your hand not on the cabinet? Do you represent me in a case against your husband? Yes. Thank For you. what? That's the softest case I've ever heard. All right, I think that's pretty good. Give her the old test. Oh, oh. Yeah. So, go team. Basically in the corner of it. Yeah, I guess Sam, we can live with that. It just looks like it's skewed. Because of the wall. John, I think it would be okay. It looks really good so far. I don't understand how we added six inches to the top of the size of the other microwave and we're somehow 14 inches difference. An 18 and three quarter inch cabinet. How the f did it end up? Somehow this went from a 12 to a 22. It's four extra inches. But everything should be the same exact f***ing width as the last set of cabinets. None of it makes sense. I mean, it doesn't look that bad, it's fine. We could take the ear off of that, flush trim it back, revise a half inch, and get us at least a reveal over here on this window, looking like a bunch of f***ing rooks. Why is nothing going smoothly? I don't actually think we f***ed this one up for once. This might be a first. Standard is a 30 inch wide oven and microwave. Somehow, I'm not really sure where the, the mistake was made. The upper cabinet ended up 30 one and a half. It's like an inch or an inch and a half too big. So it pushes everything off. It ruins the reveal on this side. The things don't line up. The microwave wouldn't fit right. It's how it goes. When you're building houses, like kitchens are especially hard. Like every little thing that you do affects the next four steps and four steps behind. Like it all connects. It sucks, but sometimes when you suck, you suck. This is a stud. It would probably help us to know. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm f***ing it. High five? Three-quarter high five. Snips filming today. <laughs> well, I was a dub. I was like a big dub. Woo! Well, the cabinet's hung. Hang ring. Wham, wham, wham. Hang. Get to be more awesome. Yeah, we did it. Let our baby dangle. Hang around. All right, so the next thing we need to do in here is get all of the doors and drawers mounted. But before we do that, we're gonna do all of the countertops. But because uh, we're on camera and we have magic, wow. Just like that, we've got a countertop. Look. Look. Wow. What do you think, huh? Beautiful. She's pooped herself three times today. No, this is her second. Jordan's on three. <laughs> oh, wow. Fancy. Yeah, look at that. Just look at it. Wow. It is slightly above average. So first thing we gotta do is reinforce some of these cabinets. This is where the dishwasher goes. We have to give the hardy backer, which will be the base of our concrete, something to rest on. So we're gonna make a couple pieces that go in here, and then we're going to do the same thing in our sink cabinet. We have a template for our sink that came with our sink. Sink, 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 sink. So then we gotta put some reinforcements in here and we can start cutting hardy backer. Then you gotta rip these down to two inches. Why is it freaking snowing? Got a build coming out too. I bought this Krauss sink. This company is pretty cool and I like their stuff. And it came with a template. Thank the Jeebus. So I'm clamping down my hardy backer. There's a little tip there because I can't screw it down. I have everything laid out to where I want it, where it's gonna be. That way I can then center my sink to the cabinet and not have to worry about movement. Ben's gonna count it. Three, two, one, go. On, go, slam it. Three, two, one, go.
Jordan did make the excellent point, but once this is poured, there is no reversing it. Sledgehammer. Like if you wanted to take these counter or these cabinets apart, there is. Now we're just gonna go with an epoxy flood coat and make it look like they're in it. We don't work. Just the tips with nips. We're using the party. Jordan, shut the f up. Because of the way the wall is and everything, and party backers really hard to cut accurately, you get these little gaps, right? So. A little duct tape's gonna fix that. This is just to keep the concrete inside it and not in the cabinet, because unfortunately, as much as we love concrete, we don't love it in the cabinet. So you just do a little stripper, just like that. And all it's doing is keeping the wet concrete in there until it dries. Double do you What have we learned? Don't Judge. ever blindly trust Jordan. And if you do, be ready to pay with your wallet and time. I think we're gonna be okay here. I'm valuable. Hello, peoples. This is our Z counter form from Z counter form. It's a pretty cool product. Z counter form. It's gonna create our front lip, and then this whole piece snaps off. So all we gotta do is kind of walk our way around our countertop here and screw it in, and then we can pour the concrete right over it. it makes it pretty easy. A lot of people in the past, myself included, use melamine form. I'm gonna do something like this in place with the melamine form. Would probably end in me killing Sam and Sam killing Jordan and then me dying of sadness because they're both gone. You come back and you haunt Jordan to death. So anyway, we're gonna screw these in, cut some miters and stuff, and then there's a couple more things we gotta show you guys, so. America. Right, we got the sink things mounted in. Now next we have to add the mesh and these like Z clips that set the mesh at the perfect height. They clip onto the mesh and we're going about every foot. Clippity clip, snippity snip. And then you can get access with the screw and just screw it in. We're gonna go ahead and do this whole way across. Z clip into Z mold and you make a Z counter. Okay, so we're screeded, which was a massive pain in the ass because there's not a ledge on the back there. So just be aware, it's really hard. It's really hard. I've done a lot of concrete. So Sam, that was hard. Boom. Two days later. So it's been 48 hours and the tenting has only fallen down a little bit. We're pretty antsy. Let's get this down. I only hate it a little bit. Nah, it's not bad. It looks pretty good. So much different than like what we usually do with pork concrete. I don't know how I feel. I was hoping for some more sheen. I think that might come with the ceiling though. I think so. Fortunately, we didn't get much leaking, huh? Got a little bit of separation here, so I'm just gonna run this knife, pop the front off. All right, you ready, Sam? I guess so. Ooh, Ooh. this actually looks pretty good. Like, really good. Hey, Jordan. Tons of bubbles. <laughs> Next thing and most important thing for the day, we want to get this sink installed. Sinks in, lunch has been eaten, the forks have been washed, which makes me very happy and we're not leaking over here. One of the reasons I went with this sink is because uh, we had a double bowl before and Mama Bear here and Baby Bear, we just like a single bowl. So this crowd sink specific. Oh, oh, nice. You can put the cutting board here. Oh my they God. They ways to go straight down in. Oh. They also make a plastic wow. drying rack you can run across. This is not sponsored either, by the way. This is incredible. Link in, link in the Googles. And then oh my God. that's... Oh my God. A colander. I can't get over this. This is incredible. Yes. How much? Take all the monies. Yeah. Yes, take all the monies. Was it really expensive? So, no, it was only, no, like, it was so. only like 300 bucks for the sink. In context, like, it's not cheap, but it's also not breaking the bank, I don't think, when you're doing an upgrade like this, so. Wow. From our side, well worth it. I cannot believe this. <laughs> nice faucet, too, so Kraus, really nice stuff. First time I've worked with them. We have Loving suffered it. through. We've been suffering for years. We really have been suffering. Can we throw this away? A ceremonious disposal sure. is disgusting. Can you throw it away in our accessory? trash can holder. Oh my God, wow. And Hank will get in the trash. Wow. Thank you. Wow, oh my god, I can't even believe it. It is time for a backsplash. Now, we're deciding to go with subway tile style backsplash. One, because it would have cost me an arm and a leg to do it differently. And two, nothing in this kitchen is shiny. So this will be the only shiny gloss thing. We think it'll kind of brighten it up a little bit. I have pre-mixed thin set. You can use an adhesive on a backsplash because it's not going to get caked in water. I believe this is a uh, 1 8 
notched V groove trowel. I'm not really sure. One of us didn't clean it very well, so I can't tell. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to have on hand, get yourself a Sam, because he will have everything you need. And then if you can't find a Sam, get a marker and then learn how to read. And you wanna score your tile. All you're doing is scratching the surface. It should pop nice and clean. And this will go much cleaner and faster than if you were to pull out that big ass tile. Make a mess, ruin everything. And then keeping glob on the wall, you kinda of just smudge it around. Don't worry about having it be perfect. You give yourself a nice little area and you're gonna come in and just set your top. Hey, here's a funny story for you. Four hours to come around this corner because of all the cuts. The proper planning, 32 minutes. <laughs> we got this side done, which is, I'm not gonna lie, Sam, pretty impressive. It's looking good. We got one more towel to go up here in the corner, then we let it sit overnight, and we'll grout it in the morning. Grazie. You just get a small amount, and you start mushing her into the cracks. Mush her into the crevices. Yeah. So you got the dirty, and then you use and you flip it, take the clean part. Wipe it clean. But you only get like one or two wipes on the clean side. Yeah, I don't know my swimming pool. My dad, my dad's swimming pool. You said you were five. Pantry's here! And, hold on. It didn't look like it was going to fit. Your width's wrong. Uh, no, because you can only make that three inches because you're going to cut it back. Cut it back a lot more than... It's fine. Yeah, you just, you just need this and thing under. I don't know it's a sketch. Yeah. yeah. Shoot. Well, no, not, but we don't have a panel one. Two, this overhangs an inch and a quarter, so it would come an inch and a quarter here. This is three inches wide. Yeah. So it's going to, it'll be tight. It'll be fine. Um, it'll work. So backsplash is done, which means we just got to get a couple cabinets. We made a few adjustments. We had a couple hiccups in our measuring. So Jordan rebuilt some cabinets that just came back from a finish, and this is our pantry. Sorry, I bought that yesterday. Well, that sucks. Good. You can uh, move, Jordan. Jordan, as we know, is a rookie. He, he put a lot of effort into this, but this was his original door, and the mistake that happened here wasn't on him. It was on me for not telling him that this is how it works, but as you guys know, we put space balls in all of our doors, so when things expand, they don't explode. And because there's space balls in this, it actually warped this out, making the door too big in the center. For us to cut it and do a bunch of stuff would have got way too squirrely and also ruined these styles here, size-wise. That's right. And then we would have had to refinish them anyway. So he went ahead and rebuilt new doors and put this crossbar in here, keeping them straight. So we got this panel in, we're gonna screw this thing in, and then we're gonna mount these doors, get this pantry and this kitchen buttoned up so we can do a fun reveal. And I hope it turns out slightly above average. Oh, boom. And the doors actually shut. Yeah, it's weird Jordan's not here. We got something done. <laughs> Subscribe if you like kitchens. We're not gonna do any more of them. All right, a few fun features before we wrap this thing up. First off, we finish this pantry. We've got some slide outs in here, uh, which should be pretty convenient for when we actually load her up. And then also, we're hiding my water cooler in here, because uh, in the city of Pittsburgh, we have worse lead content than Flint, Michigan. So we get all of our drinking water filtered. Another cool feature here, this is Sam's addition, is this little fold out. That's a, that's a drying rack, keeps your sponges. Just helps the sink look a little bit more clean. And then I think the last super cool feature that everyone should have in their home if you're doing any upgrades is this guy. She's delicious and nutritious. But I'm gonna link to that in the description if you want one, because they're awesome. It took me literally 10 minutes to install. You don't have to do anything. You just replace the hole that you would typically have your soap dispenser in, because who needs soap? And that's gonna be a wrap on this one. 
I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Really appreciate you tuning in. Sam and I are both still alive. This is Sam. He's breathing. Jordan, on the other hand, we have no idea where he's we at. We haven't seen him in three days. So help us find Jordan. And also, here's a whole playlist for you. If you want to watch the rest, it's right here.